Hi everyone. In this exercise we're going to take a look at Adobe Illustrator Shape Builder Tool and Width Tool. Hi everyone. Uh, like we covered in class the other day, the whole idea behind the Shape Builder Tool is to use it to create an end result of a shape. For example here I'm going to create uh, a teddy bear. But what I've done first, I've created the shapes that are going to make up this teddy bear. I have circles. I have a shape that I created with the pencil tool. Uh, a line that I've created with the pen tool. You could use any of the shapes. So look at your overall object. Uh, break it down in the shapes that could be combined to create it. So here I have my shape. I'm going to use the selection tool to select all of them. And from the toolbox select the shape builder tool. The Shape Builder tool, when you hover over an area, it lets you know what area it is about to affect. If you hold down your mouse and drag from one shape to another, you see that the Shape Builder tool, uh, there's a plus sign next to the icon, and it's indicating which shapes it is about to combine. So I can combine any of these shapes. So let's combine those two. Let's combine these and I'm going to continue to combine my shapes. There you go, that works. This one works. And here I have little uh, lines that I want to remove. If I hold down the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, the icon will show you a um, minus symbol next to the icon. So I'm going to click on the line and those will, whoops, <laughs> those will go away. The indi red indicator is letting you know what line it's going to delete when you click. So make sure you have your cursor over the correct line. So let's take and get rid of these and whoops. And undo is a wonderful thing, I'm telling you. Always have that keystroke ready. Whoops. <laughs> Always have that keystroke ready. Alright. And it helps if you zoom in. So let's continue and combine these shapes. Those two don't want to get combined for some reason. Let's see if I can work through that. Okay, this one does not want to work that way. All right, I'll fix you in a second. I'm going to continue on and combine shapes here. And so all you're doing is just dragging through to combine these basic shapes to get the shape that you want. All right, so what do I have over here? Let me zoom in and see what's going on. All right, so I'm having some kind of issue here where it will not combine these two areas. So what I'm thinking is that I have a gap in there that I need for the Shape Builder tool to detect. So over in the toolbox, I'm going to double click on the Shape Builder tool and select Gap Detection. Once I select that, you have a choice of whether or not it will detect small gaps, medium, large, in order to make sure that um, the shapes are combined. I'm going to select medium to make sure that it gets the area that I want. Choose OK. And now as I drag through, it will combine that little area that seems to be stubborn here. So let's zoom out and let's deselect. After you've created your bear using the Shape Builder tool, you can even use the Shape Builder tool to paint your bear. I'm going to double click on the Shape Builder tool and in this Shape Builder tool options, you have an option to pick color from color swatches or the artwork. Since there are no colors in the artwork, let's choose color swatches and select cursor swatch preview and now choose OK. And what this cursor preview is showing are actually the colors from the color swatches here. So for example, let me dismiss this. If I press the arrow keys on my keyboard, you can see the colors change. It's actually going through the colors and the color swatches. 
So now I can come over and if I want to paint my bear a light brown, I can. And let's give him some dark colored eyes and a even, let's see, a darker nose, darker nose. So let's deselect and there's my bear all colored up. Okay, now let's take a look at the width tool. And first, we're going to go over to artboard number two. And here I have an outline of a seashell. What I'd like to do is give this seashell a little more uh, depth, a little more freestyle drawing. Uh, it was created with the pen tool. So let's add a little more width to the outline. So with the width tool, with the toolbox, I'm going to zoom in a little bit too. Okay. With the width tool, you can come over to any line created by a, uh, I'm sorry, any path created by a shape, uh, shape tool, line tool, like the pencil tool, uh, or pen tool. And what it allows you to do, what the width tool allows you to do, is just hold your mouse button down on that path and actually drag out to increase the width of that path. What you see are handles, and you also see the width point in the center of this stroke. So I am going to make the width about that thick, and then come over. And your width point can be anywhere. I could start it here, or, or I can start it here, in this, near the center, like I did with the others. Whoops. There you go. So the width tool is giving a little more depth to this shape. More of a little more of a freestyle than what you would create with the other tools. I can also use the width tool to work on one um, side of my line or my path instead of both. For example, the width tool starts by dragging equidistant from the center of the path. If I hold down the Option key, I can take this width handle and drag it back toward the center of the path so that I'm only working with one side of the stroke, widening only one side. So gives you flexibility of the types of irregular shapes that you can create. And you can have more than one width point on a separate, you know, part of a path. So here you see I'm increasing the size of this width point, but let's not make that too drastic. Okay, so using the width tool, you can create um, a little more depth, the character freestyle look of any path that you can create. Hope this was helpful. This is Sheeta Hunter. Until next time.